Let's talk about crucial web design principles that you can follow to design and develop great websites that are functionally aesthetic and usable for your end users. And make sure to stay until the end of this video because you don't wanna miss out on what I think is the most important principle. So the first principle that I would like to talk about to design and develop great websites would be spacing. Spacing is responsible in creating a clean and a visually appealing layout. It also helps improve readability of a website, maintain a sense of balance, and help guide the user's focus. And I guess when we talk about spacing, it's also referring to the proximity of the elements within a website as well. So let's take a look at an example of good spacing. So the first website we have here would be from Sensa, which I believe would be a digital agency website. And if we take a look at this hero section right here, it's very simple, it's very minimal, and especially with this illustration on the right here, it's so simple, um, it adds a lot of good breathing space to the, the hero section itself. So that way you focus on the main content here to kind of understand who they are and what they do as a digital agency. So with this simple illustration right here, it really establishes the focal point of this content. They want you to read it, they want you to know who they are, and yeah, excellent use of spacing to guide the user's focus. And as for the next section, the spacing here is excellent, um, especially the spacing between the three elements here, the heading, the content, and the illustrations. It's so well put together that it really maintains a good sense of balance. It's very easy to digest the information that they have right here. There's also a lot of breathing space to consume information without being too overwhelmed. And once again, especially with illustrations as well, it really adds personality and a sense of customizability to the website, but it also adds good spacing to the website. If you were to remove the illustrations here, it would feel a little bit too empty. So adding these illustrations will not only add personality to the website, but also adds good sense of balance and good spacing to the website. And as we go on to the next section as well, the services section, once again, the spacing between the lines here and then the text is very well spaced and it's very balanced. So it's very easy to kind of consume information, kind of understand what skills they have and what kind of stages of what companies that they work for. And then as you scroll down, the spacing once again is very minimal. It's very, there's a lot of breathing space to consume the information. And yeah, same goes with the call to action as well. So let's take a look at a bad example of spacing. So if you take a look at the design that I've made for this video right here, and if you look at the hero section, the spacing between these two elements aren't great in a way that the spacing between this left column and this right column is a little bit too tight. So it's very difficult to kind of read and to consume information, especially the column on the left, which would be the main content that you, you want your users to focus on. But right now, the spacing, there's a lot of not a lot of breathing space. So it makes it really hard to read um, the information right here. And then as you scroll down, another issue is the spacing between sections as well. It's in a way, it's a little bit too condensed, a little bit too small. Um, so as your users scroll down, they're continuously being presented with an overloading amount of elements and information, which is not ideal for readability as well as the user experience. And then if you take a look at this text elements right here, once again, the spacing is very condensed. It's not really readable. It's not that professional. It just feels like it's a little bit too overwhelming. So if you take a look at the improved version right here, the spacing is already so much better, especially with the hero section right here, the spacing between these two elements is significantly increased. And if you can tell, it's much easier to read, especially the left content here. And yeah, it's not like the two elements are clashing against each other, fighting for attention. You can't really tell which one is the main content. And um, yeah, it's much easier to read. There's much more balance as well. And as you scroll down, the section padding is also increased. There's much more breathing space as well. And once again, the text elements here are also increased. The spacing are also increased. So in a way, it's much easier to read. It's much easier to digest information without being too overloaded with a with bunch of condensed elements together. So if you'd like to achieve good spacing in your design, I would suggest looking at the Figma file I've linked down below in the description. That way you can ensure consistency in your spacing, but as well maintain a good sense of balance in your websites. Next up, let's talk about topography. So topography is crucial for the UI and UX of a website because it really defines whether if your website is accessible, readable, or even user-friendly. So the size differences, the length of a copy, the alignment of your text, 
or even the coding of your typesetting is crucial to differentiate a great website from an amateur one. So let's take a look at a good example of typography. So this website I'm looking at is Pan and Pay made by Locomotive Studio. So if you take a look at this second section right here, I think the typography, typography is great for numerous reasons. First off is the length of the copy. It's not too short or too long and it, it makes it really easy to digest information and read. If it was a little bit too long, uh, your eyes would have to go left and right, left and right, very drastic movements, which makes it really be really hard to read and doesn't help with the user experience of the website. And what you want to do on a website is make your website skimmable. If your text is too long, it doesn't really help making your website skimmable because of the drastic movements and effort that you have to take to read the paragraph. So this length right here is perfect. It makes it super easy to read. So the second reason is the alignment of the text. Although it's such a minor detail, but it makes a huge difference on making your website usable and readable. What I see on a lot of websites nowadays, a lot of people center align their body text, which makes it super, super difficult to read, especially due to the inconsistencies on where each line of text starts. It makes it super hard to read. So if you were to left align your text, your body text, it makes it so much easier because the consistency of the line text is throughout it's consistent it's super easy to read and it's very easy to digest information it doesn't take a lot of effort and as we move on to the website their use of typography is great it's super easy to digest information it's not a lot of text so very skimmable it's very easy to kind of understand what they're trying to communicate to us so going back to my website right here if you take a look at my bad example the typography is not that great, especially starting off with the heading right here. The spacing and the line height is very spaced out. It doesn't really help with the read readability of the H1. And then as you also can see, the type is also way too big. It doesn't really help with the readability. It doesn't also help with the spacing and the readability of the website. So as we scroll down on this second section right here, there's two big issues. First off is the length of the copy and the width of the copy. So starting off the length of the copy, it's way too long. It doesn't really help make your website skimmable. Not a lot of people have time to consume all the information that you have on your website. So you need to ensure that your copy is optimized enough for people to kind of digest the important information that you want to share to them. And another issue, once again, is the width. The width is a little bit too long. So you can have to go do this, do this. So ideally, reducing the width of your copy would make it easier to read for users. And yeah, it's much easier to digest information that way as well. So let's take a look at the improved version of this website in terms of typography. So first off right here, the first glance, it's so much better. Let's break it down. H1, I reduced the line height here and increased the font weight. That way it's so much easier to capture the user's attention, but also makes it so much readable and much more visually aesthetic as well and also reduce the type size for this entire text here so in a way that so the text is not too big and making it much easier to read and there's more breathing space on the hero section as well so if we take a look at, at the second section right here i've reduced the length and the width of the copy so in this way it's much more readable it's much more usable as well since it's so much easier to graphs the most important information it makes it super easy to skim through so reduce your copy make sure to left align your text that way your website will be much more usable and yeah that's it for typography let's move on to colors so colors are very important in designing great websites as well it also really helps with setting your website or your brand apart it also ensure accessibility and as well as the overall user experience so if we take a look at this website right here mate libre uh, I hope I said that correctly. Uh, once again, a website made by Locomotive. Shout out to them. So if you take a look at the hero section here, the colors are very neutral. Uh, it's not it's nothing too crazy going on here. We have white and gray and black going on, but the majority of the colors are coming from the images itself. So if you take a look at the hero section right here, all the images that I have that are very dynamic, very vibrant, to really encapsulate and express the brand that they're trying to communicate. And then as we scroll down, uh, they also have colors for each of the product that they have that they're selling, uh, which I think has done really great. 
to kind of contrast between the neutral colors to bring the attention to users to really emphasize this is what they're selling and this is what we offer. And then as you scroll down here, you can still see the colors are very neutral, but this is balanced by, you know, once again, these very dynamic and very vibrant images. And I think the biggest takeaway is sometimes the easiest approach is to, you know, less is better, is not to complicate too many of your colors and use images. It really helps adding depth and customizability to your website as well. So if we take a look at this website here, I don't think I have that much to talk about in terms of colors, but one thing I want to point out is accessibility. I think the most important thing in terms of colors is to make sure that users can see the colors. So if you take a look at this testimonial section right here, the colors of the text here is a little bit too light. So if a blurred vision user were to see this, it will be very difficult to them to read the text. So the biggest takeaway for colors is make sure the colors pass the contrast ratio and yeah, make sure your website is accessible. Never mind, I lied. So in this last principle, I'll also talk about how colors and other, other principles that I've mentioned throughout this video would support hierarchy. So hierarchy would be a very essential principle to making your website user-friendly. It's responsible in making a website very easy to navigate, easy for users to find information and help your users achieve what they want on your website. So uh, if we take a look at this website right here, I think they have done a really good job in terms of visual hierarchy. So this website is designership.com. Um, I'll link it all the websites mentioned throughout this video down below in the description, by the way. So here's a section right here. I think the hierarchy is done brilliantly in terms of the relationships of these elements here are very well clearly defined. It's very clear on which elements that they want you to focus on. So if we take a look here, the H1 here is much bigger than this paragraph and it's also a very much brighter color. So in a way that they want you to focus on this H1, they want you to know who they are and what they do. And second thing is the button here. So they set the button with the, their brand color. It really sets it apart. It really brings the attention to you that you, you know, they want you to click on this button right here. So overall, I think in terms of the hierarchy here, I think they've done a really good job in kind of determining what is the primary action or information that you want, they want you to look at and which would be the secondary thing that they want you to look at. So I guess the secondary thing would be like the success stories here or like this light gray text here. And yeah, I think they've done a really good job in terms of setting the visual hierarchy of this hero section. And then as you scroll down, there's more great examples of hierarchy. And yeah, I think it's really easy to read, it's very easy to scan. The hierarchy is excellent. All right, so back here on this website again, and if you take a look at the visual hierarchy in this hero section right here, it's not that great. There isn't a clear relationship between like these elements or these elements. So overall, it's very difficult to kind of, you know, know what you're supposed to look at, especially with these colors and they're all black here. So you don't really know what to focus on and what you don't know what's the most important information that you're supposed to, you know, prioritize. So if we take a look at this improved version of this website. I think the visual hierarchy in the hero section is so much better. It's so much more clear on what you're supposed to look at first and second and third and fourth. So it's much more clear on what you're supposed to look at, which would be this heading. And then users can understand what this company does or what this website does by looking at this secondary text, this light gray text right here. And then once again, the call to action here, the buttons are the two different colors. and. This black button is so much more contrast compared to this white one, which makes it the primary button, the primary action that you want your users to take. And if they want to learn more, then of course they can see this learn more, but the primary focus would be downloading the app. And then as you scroll down, there are better examples of visual hierarchy here. And I think a really good practice or good element that you can you know, improve hierarchy is adding these overlines to the section of your contents, to the heading of your contents, it can really set the context of what the users need to expect or like will expect to read as they scroll down. And I think it's a really good way to you know set visual hierarchy to a website. And yeah, as we scroll down, better examples of visual hierarchy. This text is lighter gray and this is like black, really sets the you know relationship between these two elements. 
And yeah, I think that's all for the visual hierarchy and that's pretty much it. So just keep in mind that these principles are just guidelines. You don't have to know every each and one of them. And I guess my suggestion is just to take a lot of time to study these kind of websites that I've showed you or just study other great designs to kind of understand how they communicate their information, how they lay things out. I think that way it really improves your kind of knowledge in or your perception of what a good looking or user friendly website would look like. And in terms of improving your skills, I think keep designing websites or keep designing and developing websites and ask for feedback in Discord communities or whatever communities you might be in. And I really recommend joining Oliver's Discord community. I think everyone there is also very supportive uh, in terms of getting giving you good feedback. So yeah, totally recommend joining the Discord channel. And yeah, I really appreciate you sticking around. And if you want to have more resources to finding these great websites, make sure to check out this video right here. And uh, if you want to see more videos of mine, then you can click this playlist right here. Other than that, enjoy your day. That's pretty much it. See ya.